Hello, I am Ines Alea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I'll be showing you how to create an arrow in Cinema 4D. This is actually a pre-tutorial to another tutorial that I'm about to make and that's how to create an intro just like in the series Arrow. Uh, but we do need an arrow for that so that's why I'm making this tutorial first. Uh, so if you want to see that tutorial as well be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can see it in your subscription feed uh, on YouTube. So enjoy the tutorial and let's start up uh, Cinema 4D and get started. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D. Let's start and create an arrow. So uh, first of all, make sure your uh, settings, well, your document is saved and change your render settings to physical. Um, then I'm going to add a cylinder here and rotate it in this way to minus 90. And I'm going to change uh, the height to 100 and a radius of 0.7. Okay. Then I'm going to uh, change the name to body and copy and paste it again. So copy that same cylinder and paste it and rename this to end part and change the height to like 12. Position this all the way to the end right over here. And increase the radius to 0.85. So now we get something like this here. And then next we are going to create the arrow itself. So uh, we're going to use a cube here. Well, actually a primitive, a cone, and also rotate it the same way that we have done for the cylinder. And also uh, this is way too big. So we're going to size this down as well. So make sure the radius is lower and height. Position this a little bit more towards the front here. And we already have something pretty nice. What do you think? Uh, it's a special arrow, um, but okay. Uh, we're going to decrease it even more, maybe to something like four and a height of um, maybe four as well. Well, actually maybe eight. And position this, oh, position this at the top of our arrow tip here. And then what I've done is um, I will copy and paste it and then just um, hold alt and click double click on these uh, circles here until it's red and that means you're not going to see it in your render or in your viewport so uh, if we check we only have one cone to work with now um, I'm going to make this one editable by pressing C on the keyboard or clicking on this icon here now we have an editable uh, layer I'm going to choose my polygon tool and my live selection tool and select all my polygons here and delete them and actually only select visible elements should be checked on so oh if we do this again select it like that and delete it we're not going to uh, delete anything behind that right click and close polygon to uh, hole and click like so now we have a close hole but it's connected to the object uh, because otherwise it's not going to be connected and if you do want to do something different um, is going to give some problems. So once we have done that, go back to the model mode and use a scale and just scale it like so until it actually matches the uh, arrow tip here. So it's coming through a little bit over here, but if we move it forwards, uh, we are not going to see that anymore. Okay, there we go. So this is going to be our arrow. Uh, what you can do is play around a little bit more and really go into detail, but this is actually um, meant for a simple arrow that we're going to use for animation. So we're not going to get too much into detail on how to create a really um, detailed arrow. And there we go. And now hold all and click on these um, yeah buttons again. Uh, so we can see our first cone and we're going to change this to like two and maybe three and one, something like this position it right over here and this is going to be the connection tool to our actual arrow so we can make it a little bit longer and there we go all right so now we have our connection to our actual object um okay there we go and now we can start creating the feathers. Um, I created this using a cube and I changed the cube to uh, segments to like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, let's take 0.2 and a Z size of also 10 and a height of three. There we go. 
we're going to put, well, actually we don't have to position it. Um, then also make it editable. So click on our cube and edit it, uh, make it editable. Go to your point selection tool and also choose the live selection tool. And this time we can uncheck only see visible elements. So make sure this is unchecked. Go to another viewport and go to, um, well, actually, uh, or right view here. Open that up and zoom in all the way. And there we go. And select the top um, points here of our object and just um, tilt them just like this. So we have something uh, like an actual feather of an arrow. Go back to our perspective and now we are going to use a MoGref cloner. Put that object into our cloner and we are going to choose a mode radial. For the radial count F4 and also a transformation of, I think it's like, um, well actually I'm going to make uh, the object radius to one first. And it's all already pretty good actually, so I don't have to change anything. Okay, never mind. Uh, we're going to use that cloner and position it on top of the connection at the end of our arrow here. So right over here, and then just increase this to 2.5. Let's see if this is connecting it correctly. It should be 2.2 maybe. So it's make sure it's touching the end part, but yeah, not too much. Something like this. And then we can again position it a little bit better towards the middle, the center of our end part. And now we have... Um, we have our feathers. If you want to, you can also uh, make them a little bit thinner, so that's up to you. Uh, you can also select the top part and also make it thinner towards the top, so we have something like this. Uh, like this. Um, and this should work as well. And yeah, that's it. So this is actually everything we should do to model a an arrow. Uh, what you can do as well is maybe make it a little bit smaller so it has kind of the same height of our arrow at the beginning here. So I think this is actually looking uh, pretty nice. Maybe it's a little bit too long. And just for my personal preferences, I'm going to change it to 80 centimeters and just uh, use the first two cones, um, select them by holding control, and then you select them both and hold Alt and press G to group them. So we have our actual arrow dart and I'm going to just uh, rename this to dart. And then the end parts uh, and the body, okay. And then we have here feathers. Just rename everything so everything is clear. And then for the dart, I'm going to move it a little bit more towards our arrow. Check it out. Oh, being a little bit quick here. So now it's connected to the arrow and I think the, um, the dimensions are a little bit better this way. I do prefer it to be a little bit smaller. And I'm talking about arrows and nothing different, so. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's start with texturing. Uh, let's delete these textures and save our um, document so we don't lose anything. And I'm going to create a new material and actually you don't have to go into detail too much because this is going to be for animation. So your uh, texturing shouldn't be too perfect. Uh, well, you can always go perfect, but it's going to increase the render time. So I'm going to choose like a very dark brown color and click OK. Go to the reflectance and just delete it and add a Beckman and increase the roughness and just decrease the specular to zero and the reflection to three and go to the layer for now and change this to a conductor. And that's all you should do and apply this to your body. Then next I'm going to create a new material as well and just choose a green color, nice dark green color and go back to your reflectance, delete the default specular and also add a Beckman. And I'm going to change this to um, the layer color of this um, yeah, reflection to a nice green color, a little bit darker. There we go. Now we have like a nice green metallic color. So if we're going to apply this to the dart, just apply it to the group here and delete it here. And actually, if we're going to put this in a hypernerves, we can get something like this, uh, which is actually not too nice. So <laughs> um, I'm actually going to select my first cone here, the actual dart and I'm just going to delete the uh, subdivision. You don't really need it for, for this kind of example. But I'm going to make it a little bit thinner because I think it's still too thick to actually penetrate into something. So now we have a better arrow and also the connection is a little bit better. So if we put that into a subdivision, okay, this is a little better already. So now we have something like that. Uh, and put that onto there 
Uh, okay. Well, actually, we don't really need a subdivision, so I'm going to keep it that way um, because else we're going to get too much into detail, and that's not the point of this tutorial. Um, it's just for animation. So, okay, uh, we have something like that. And now what I've done is, uh, well, go back to Reflectance and add another Backman. And here we can increase the roughness, uh, change the roughness to a noise, and change the noise to a Luca, and just decrease the contrast to minus 60. Go back one page up. Let's uh, rename this to Coat and the top one to uh, Details, maybe. Decrease your reflection and decrease the speckler to zero and change it to an additive. Okay. Um, and let's see what we have here. And actually, we need something to reflect on, so let's choose a physical sky and let's see what we have. What you can do as well is um, just for preview purposes, uh, let's go to the cone, go to the caps and add like a button cap 0 0.01, uh, 0 0.05 here and a radius of 0.05 as well. And this is going to give a little bit of detail towards the curves here so to the edges of your cone. And for the other one, you can do this because uh, it's already made editable, but you can choose your edge tool selection, press U and L on the keyboard or go to select loop selection and select this edge here. Well, actually, it's not really working too perfectly here. So do good. Okay. So I'm going to do it manually. Um, I'm going to do this like this here. Well, actually, I'm just going to select my edge tool here and select all these edges. Sometimes the loop selection doesn't work. And especially if you work with something that um, has been closed, like the closed polygon that we have used. But it was necessary to get some nice results. So. I'm going to deselect this one so we can actually see, um, well, I'm just going to solo this. Solo this in the viewport. I'll select these edges here. Okay, right click and bevel. If you drag this out a little bit, I'm going to get something like this. Oh. Okay, we get a nice bevel. We don't get anything on top, or we do. Okay, and if we render this out, we're going to get a nice edge here. So it's going to add a little bit of detail. As you can see right away, because of the reflections here, the bevel is really catching your eye and it's a, giving a nice result. So unsolo everything. Okay, and let's continue. Go to the bump and use a noise here. And for that noise, we're going to use like also maybe a wavy turbulence, change the global scale to five or uh, maybe 10. And if we're going to change the uh, material here to a projection cubic, we're going to get more detail here. All right, I'm going to increase the size of my global scale to 50. And the bump is not selected, so <laughs> that's why we don't see any bump. Okay, now we get some kind of imperfections into our reflections. You can see them right here. This is our bump. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And then next what I will do is um, go to the color and change the texture to a layer here. So open up the layer and add a shader color. Okay, so pick a dark green color here. I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Okay, we have a dark gray color. And then add an image. Uh, we can use a texture that you can find on Google. Uh, stock footage, stock textures uh, here. I have some grunge metals. Uh, you can find them on Google by searching for grunge metal uh, and just search them. I can share them with you because here, these images are not mine, uh, but I will use this uh, for this tutorial. Um, Click no and change it to an overlay here. And if we're going to render this out, actually cubic seamless. Let's also check seamless. 
we get a little bit more um, variation in the color of our arrow, but not too much. So I'm just going to deselect the reflections so we can only concentrate on our color. And we can see it's not giving a big impact. So what I will do is um, make it 75 and also change the size here of the dark to 50 in the texture. So now we should see a little bit more. We actually see less. Okay, that's kind of logical. Uh, change it to a screen. Let's see. Okay, we'll have to play around a little bit more to um, actually see it. Maybe change it to 25 and this one to 25 as well. So uh, as you can see in my texture, we have some black parts and I think we just saw one of these black uh, parts. So now we see a little bit more detail in our color and it's like we can change it to 75 here. Okay, so now we have some variation in the color and if we select the reflectance again, I'm going to, ah, okay, um, I forgot to do something here and that's removing a little bit here of the details part and a little bit of the coat here. So it's a little bit aged and also for the roughness of our coat, we can add a noise here and change it to a Luca and increase the low clip like so. Also increase the size. Okay, there we go. Let's also copy this channel to our reflection. It's a little bit too big here, so the global scale to 50 and see what this gives us. Decrease the low clip and a little bit more of the high clip. And now we're getting these uh, reflections and some of the uh, texture of our image. Okay, so this was actually what I was after, so... And yeah, you can really play around a little bit more with everything and see what works and what doesn't. I'm going to remove the speckler because I really don't like the fake uh, speckler on my object. Uh, but if you're going to zoom out, because this is actually for animation, we're going to get something like this here. Okay, and if we color grade this, this is going to look a lot better. We can also apply this to the end part here and, and apply it to our feathers here so we get something like that. And from a long distance, we're going to see something like this. So this is our arrow. If we're going to enable our sky here. Okay, so this is pretty cool. And then it's up to you to uh, follow the next tutorial and use this arrow to create a nice intro. So, so if you like this tutorial, give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the next tutorial on where we will create this intro that I also made a preview on. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.